Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Alfred from Practical Code Academy. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a chat pop-up window similar to this one. You have the button here for the chat button. When you click on it, you're going to find this window come to the screen. This is not an actual person who's chatting with you, and this is not a real notification. This is just the UI of the chat window, uh, the pop-up chat window. However, the functionality is not embedded there. To actually create a chat application, you need to use WebSockets for real-time communication, and also you need a database to store all the conversation between you and other person in the chat. However, we're doing just the UI and using JavaScript to uh, simulate the chat. For example, I can chat, give him, uh, send him a message back, and this is supposed to be my avatar here. Also, you can select emojis. You can select any emojis you want and you can send it and it will be displayed in the chat box. And if you toggle the button here, you get back to the conversation of the chat. For the emojis, I'm going to use this library, which is emoji button.js. For this project source code and the link to this library, I'm going to put it in the video description. You can go ahead and check them out. Uh, this is the library here. You can test it. We're just going to embed it in our application. We're going to use the CDN. However, if you're familiar with NPM or Yarn, definitely you can go ahead and install the this library is using npm or yarn. So I have my project folder here. I'm going to open it with Visual Studio Code. And for the file structure, I have the index.html. I have the main JavaScript file, which is empty right now. And I have the styling sheet. Also, I'm having two images. This is for me as supposed to be my avatar, which is this person, and the other person avatar, which is going to be that person. So it's having only person.jpg and me.jpg. For the index.html, let's create the boilerplate using Emmet. And for the title, I'm going to call it chat window. For the body here, I'm going to create a section with an h1 tag, chat And also a paragraph, click on the chat button to start chat. Now I need to create the button itself. So I'm going to do a button with a class of chat space dash PTN. For this project, I'm going to use Google material icons. So you can open your browser, search for material icons CDN. Here you can go for the CDNJS libraries. Here that's gonna give us the correct CDN. And I can copy it. Copy. And I can link it here in my head. Save it. Want to toggle the, view, the word wrap? Okay, now since I have the library, I can go ahead and search for material icons. And this will show you all the icons that's used by Google Material. The one that I'm going to use is called Comment here. So this is the one that I'm going to use here. Actually, I'm going to use the insert comment. They are pretty much the same. So I can select the, the icon here and then selected icon and you can take copy this element here. Once I copy it, get back to my Visual Studio and I'm going to put the icon inside my button. Can I just a little bit format it? 
just gonna put it in a different line here. Okay, here the using span, I can just change it to an eye tag. Also, all material icons using the class material icons, and you put the value of the icon here as the content, not as a class similar to Font Awesome. Font Awesome put, depend on the class, it will select the icon. However, for material icons, you have to put it in the text content. So the text content right now is the comment. That's for my button. Now I go for the window that's gonna be pop up when I click in this button. I'm gonna create a div with a class of chat pop up. And now I wanna add, if you remember, let me open my application again. I wanna add this page. So this is the page. I'm gonna add it inside the chat pop-up. So I'm gonna create a div with a class of page. I'm gonna put the value one in that case. Now I need to indicate the chat area, which is this area here where all the text is inside it. So I'm gonna do uh, div with a class of chat area. Okay, inside the chat area, there is an incoming messages from that other user. So I'm gonna do a div. I'm gonna give it a class of income dash MSS, MSG, which is incoming message. And the message is composed of the avatar picture and the message itself. So I'm gonna use the image tag here. I'm gonna give it a source of image folder. And inside the image folder, I have the other person image. And after his avatar, his message itself, which is gonna be a span of a class of message and the message that he sent it to you which is in that case hi how can i help you definitely you can change the text here to whatever you want that's been done for the incoming message after the incoming message there is the input area where you send the text which is this area here where you can type in anything and send it back so this is the input area I'm gonna create a div for this input area. I'm gonna give it a class, input area. The input area is consists of three elements. The input tag, which is type text in that case. So you have the input text and you have a button here for selecting the emojis. This is the second element. And the last element is the submit button. So we have the first element here. Now we have a button. I'm gonna give it a class. <coughs> Emoji button PTN. And now to put an emoji here, the emoji is just a simply an entity with a number. So if you search for emoji HTML, codes and you can go to the w3 school they having a reference with all the emoji as you can see every single emoji it having its own hex number so in that case we're going to look for smiley face you can pick this one and or any one you want I'm gonna pick this one And since it's entity, it have to start with an M percent and then hash of the number and then the number itself. And it must end with a semicolon. And that's will give me the emoji. Let's take, give it a, take a look at it. Let's open it with the live server. Here we are, as you can see, this is our material icon and this is our emoji inside the bind. For now, it just look like very ugly 
However, we're going to fix everything with the CSS. But we're just putting all the elements that we're going to need for that project. And then we're going to fix all the CSS. OK, that's been said. Uh, now you know how to insert an emoji as an entity. Next, I need the submit button, which is also a button with a class of submit. And I need a material icon in that case inside this button. So I'm going to use an i tag. And as I told you, any material icon must have a material icons class. And you put the name of the icon inside the text content here. And the name of the icon that I want to use is send. And if I save this, go back here, and this is the icon that I'm going to use. OK? That's it for the markup mainly. Uh, before I forget, I need to link my styling sheet, which is style.css. And also, I need to uh, hook up my library that I'm going to be using, in that case, which is emoji. Button JS. Yep, this is the library that we're going to using, and the cool part about it is vanilla JavaScript. That's mean you. It's not required jQuery. It's not required any other libraries. I'm going to grab the CDN here. Going to copy it. Going to paste it here before the closing tag of my body. And that's how I import this library in my code. I also, I want to import my custom main.js. Main script source main.js. OK, before we close the emoji library, let's make this button here working. Because right now, when I click on it, nothing happened. Let's make it working first. So they give you this code here. Take the copy of this code, copy it, and we need to customize it a little bit. And I'm going to paste it in my main.js. So in my main.js, I'll take these two values, and I don't like to put them inside the event listener. I'm going to put them in the top. I'm just going to take them. This is just defining stuff here. What do you first define is the emoji button. So you may create a constant for the button. And you do document the query selector. And you're looking for this ID, emoji button. However, in our code, we didn't put the same ID. We call it something else. We call it emoji BTN. So we have to make it to put the equivalent ID here, which is emoji BTN. And I don't like to call it a uh, button here. I'm just going to change the variable name or the constant name. Emoji BTN. The next line, they create a constant called picker, which instantiates uh, a method or a class called emoji button from the library, which you're going to leave it the same way it is. Now you want to add the event listener to the window itself. So when the window is loaded, document DOM content is loaded, you want to run a function. And this is a ES6 arrow function here. So inside this function, you have an event listener for an event called emoji, which will select the input uh, here, the input text we have in here, and get the value, and then add the emoji, emoji to this value. So whenever you select an emoji, this event will be triggered. Get Grab this emoji, and it will add it to the value of your input. OK, now also you need to listen to the button when the user click on it to select an emoji. And that case, since I changed the button here at the top, I call it emoji btn. I need to correct it here. And this is just a click event listener, and it will listen to the emoji button when the user click on it, and it will run a picker dot toggle pick, uh, picker, and it will pass the button. In that case, I also I don't have any variable called or constant called button. I need to also to change this to emoji btn. 
And now it should work. If I go back to my code or my page and I click this button, as you can see, you have the window of the selection of the emoji. And once I select one, it will add it to my input. And I also here, it will automatically add it to my input. Okay, now uh, we, we left up with the styling. I'm gonna open side by side like this. clear everything. For the styling, I'm going to select all the elements to margin uh, zero, reset my browser default, and also padding zero, and the box sizing will be border box. Okay, now for the body, I want to do font family. By default, I want Arial. Do this. Let me increase here so you can see it better. For the background color, I'm going to give it like a light gray, which is E5, E5, E5. That's a, like a very light gray. And I want to display it as flex. Then I'm going to justify the content to center. And for the height of the body, I want 100% of the view height. And now the width will be 100%. That's for my body tag. For the section itself, I'm going to give it a max width of 100 11 pixel to make it a little bit responsive. Also the margin, I'm gonna give it auto to center it in the center and also give it text align center to center the, the header and the paragraph here. Now they are centered and also for the padding, and I give it top and bottom zero, left and right one rep. I'm gonna start with the H1 here. For the H1, I'm gonna do font size three rem. Make it a little bit bigger. And the margin bottom, I wanna give it two rem. Let's put some spacing between the header and the paragraph. Save that, that's much better. For the paragraph, all I need to do is just increase the font, which is font size to rem. Okay. Now for the shed button, shed BTN, which in that case, this button here, we wanna first position fixed. Because I want to put it in the bottom of my screen here. Once it's position fixed, I want to do border. Before I do border, let's uh, align it, which is going to be right zero. So now I put it in the right zero. Actually, I'm going to give it a little bit, push it a little bit to the left. So I'm going to put right 50 pixels and bottom also 50 pixels. And now my button here, you can see it, it's in the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna start with border, none. I don't want any border. And also outline. Actually the outline, I wanna do it for every single button in my page so I can add a button here. And every single button in my page, I can add the border to be none, outline be none and also the cursor I want it to be pointer so when the user hover over it it will be a pointer and that will be applied for all the buttons in my screen so I can take this out now for the background I want to use the Dodger blue color 
for the color, for the front color, I want to make it white. So I'm going to change this color. So I'm going to select white. And also, I need to give it a little bit of padding. <clears throat> so I need to give it a little bit of width. Which in that case, 6 pixel. And also, the height will be 60 pixels. And now I need to do border radius 50%. And now I have my button here. Let's do opacity 0 0.8. So I want to make it a little bit transparent. When the user hover over it, it becomes full transparent. So when the user hover over it, I want the transition of opacity to be during 0 0.3 seconds period. The last thing I'm gonna be doing here is gonna be the shadow for this bind. So I'm gonna do box shadow, zero, five pixels, and the blurry is gonna be also five pixels. And I'm gonna use an RGBA value of a black, which is zero, zero, zero. I'm gonna select 0 0.4. And that's gonna make a drop down shadow here for this button. Okay, now I can add for the button or for the shed button BTN. When I hover over it, I want the opacity to be full, which is one. So now it's a little bit transparent. When I hover over it, as you can see, the, the, the opacity become not transparent at all. And now it's a little bit transparent, not transparent at all. And this is happening uh, with a transition of 0 0.3 seconds. Okay. Uh, now let's work on this uh, chat pop-up box. So if you remember, we have chat We can use display none to hide it, and that's gonna hide everything. However, I wanna see what I'm styling, so for now, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna comment it that this is, we need to do it later. It having a position that's also fixed, which is bottom 80 pixel. And for the right, to be 120 pixels. And that's going to bring us exactly on top of this button here. Also, for, for, for now, let me just select this image. What did I call it here? I didn't give it a class, so I should give it a class here. Class of avatar. So I'm going to select this class, avatar. I just want to uh, decrease its size for now so we can see actually everything else. So I'm going to do widths. Uh, I'll do 45 pixels. Height, 45 pixels. And uh, border radius, 50% to make it rounded. However, as you can see now, it's a stretch uh, vertically. To adjust this, you need to do, use the property of object fit. And in that case, we want cover value. And this is will make it fit inside the container of the image, or, or in that case, the image fit inside the border radius. Okay, now if we have a smaller image, we can get back to our shed buffer. For the shed pop-up, we get the right bottom position and it's fixed. Let's do some height, give it a height. In that case, it's gonna be 400 pixel. For the widths, I'm gonna give it 300 pixel. Okay, that's good. And let's give it a background color. 
actually, yeah, background color. I'm gonna do white, and now it's start to appear. Perfect. And what we need to do right now is, since I'm, it's not displayed none, I can do display flex. And the flex direction, in that case is gonna be column direction. I want stuff to be on top of each other. So now I have the, the one, the text here, and the input all on top of each other. And I want uh, the content or I want all the space to be between the incoming message and the input of my user. So I'm going to use justify content. I'm going to use all the space to put them between them. Once I do that, it will distribute the space between this one, the text and the input. After I put the justify content space between, I'm going to do some padding. I'm going to give it 0.75 rem, top and bottom, left and right, and that's going to give push stuff a little bit inside. Okay, uh, now we have the chat pop up. Now I need to cover the chat area. So I'm going to select the chat area. I'm going to give it a height 80% of its container. And uh, also, I need the overflow Y to be auto, just in case if we keep texting a lot and I need to scroll down through the text. So it's going to be overflow auto. However, for the overflow of the X is hidden. So I don't want the text to be, I, I was not, I don't, I don't need a, X scroll for left and right. So I'm setting up this, the Y scroll to be auto whenever needed to be up here. However, for the X scroll, I don't want it. For the income message itself, as you can see, the income message is consisted of the avatar and the message. So I can display them as flex to center them next to each other, and then align items center. That, as you can see now, they are aligned in the same height here on the center. I already uh, styled the avatar. Now it's uh, time to style the message itself. So I'm gonna select the income message, and I'm gonna select the class message which is my span here. This is the class I'm selecting. I'm doing background color of Dodger blue. Okay. For the color, I wanna select white. And also I'm gonna give it a little padding. So padding. 0 0.5 rem for the border radius 25 pixels and also I'm gonna give it some margin left to put it away from the avatar image margin left of 1 rem and finally I'm gonna do some box shadow drop down shadow and I'm going to use 0 to 5 pixels as my blur. I'm going to use the similar value of black with an opacity of 0 0.4. Oh, I forget the pixel here, two pixels. And that's going to give me a shadow here. Also, I forget to add a shadow for the, the pop area or the, the shad pop up area here. So I'm gonna add this here, box shadow, five pixels, five pixels, five pixel blurry, and it's gonna be RGBA, similar value of the same black. 
with the transparency of four. And as you can see here, I also forgot to add the border radius, which in that case, I want the border radius to be, let's say 10 pixels. And that's gonna give me this rounding corner over here. Okay, it's, it's actually coming very good right now so far. Now I wanna style this patch here. So what I need to do, is select the patch, position, absolute. Once I put it in position absolute, I want the width to be 30 pixels, the height to be 30 pixels, the background color to be red, the color to be white, and the border radius be 50%. Okay. The problem now, the one is not centered inside the circle. To center it, also you can still dis use the display flex, text align, justify content, center, align items, center, and that's what will put it inside the middle of the circle. Now I need to put it all the way in the top here. To do so, I need to use the top of not negative 10 pixels. And also I need to put the right of negative 10 pixels. And that's gonna put the patch all the way in the corner as you can see now. So this is done right here. What we need now to um, style is gonna be the input value here. So I'm gonna go for the input area. And I wanna do position relative. And the reason for position relative because I wanna add this happy face inside my, I wanna position it inside my input uh, element. So I'm gonna do position relative for the parent and display flex and justify content center, okay? For the input, I only have one input, so I can select it like this, or you can use the attribute selector, which is type equal text. The widths, I want it to be 100%, and the border, I want one pixel solid of the color CCC, light gray. Also, I want the font size, font size to be one RAM. For the border radius of this input text, I want it to be five pixel to be a little bit rounded in the corner. Also the height, I need to change the height. I'll make it 2.2 RAM, okay? Now I'm gonna work in the emoji bind, try to put it, to make it inside my uh, input text element. So I'm gonna select my emoji ID, emoji, BTN ID. I'm gonna do the position absolute and I'm gonna do the border. We already did the border. I wanna do the font size to be 1.2 RAM to make it a little bit bigger. And I want it to uh, background color to be transparent. Also, I wanna position it here. So I'm gonna do right. 50 pixels, top, two pixels. And I'm also gonna give it some opacity to be 0 0.5 when the user is not hovering over it. And when he hover over it, it will have the full uh, opacity. 
Um, let's make it 40. Okay. Actually, let's make it 50. That's fine. Because we still need to uh, style this submit button. For the submit bind, I'm going to select the bind, submit. I want to do some padding. Top and bottom is going to be 0 0.25 rem. Left and right is going to be 0 0.5 rem. I'm going to do margin left of 0 0.5 rem to give it some separation between my input and the bind. Once I save, it's going to look like this. And right now, everything is starting to be positioned correctly. The background color is going to be green for my submit bind. Also, the color will be white of my icon. And to exactly center it inside it, I need to use display flex justify content center align items center okay also i want the border radius to be five pixels good and also i want to do the opacity to be 0 0.7 okay now the opacity here is 0 0.5 here is 0 0.7. I want when the mouse hover over them to be a uh, full opacity, which is like non-transparent anymore. So I'm, I already have the shading button here. I hover over it. I'm just going to add these two classes to it. So I'm going to do submit. Let's hover. Status. And also my emoji. PTN. Hover. I want the opacity to be one. Save. Once you save, now I can hover over it. And as you can see, it's a little bit transparent. Now when I hover over it, it's it's fully not transparent at all with the opacity of one. Okay, that's set so far. You can here type anything, hi, and select your emoji. And once you send it, nothing going to happen because we need to add this functionality using the JavaScript. Also, we need to toggle this uh, chat window with the JavaScript when I when I click in this button, open it and close it. Okay, let's work on that. Okay, so what I need to do right now, this pop-up screen, initially, I want it to be not shown. So I'm going to do it display none. And as you can see, it's not going to affect because I'm already also doing display flex here. So the display flex will be overriding the display none. So I need to delete this, or I'm going to comment it in that case. And once I commented, now it's not shown here. And what I need to do with the JavaScript, when the user click in this button, put the display back to flex and keep toggling between flex and none. To do so, I'm going to create here a class, I'm going to call it show class. And this show class will simply give the display flex when I add it to this uh, chat pop-up. It will display flex. But I need to do that dynamically through the JavaScript. OK, so now I'm going to go to my JavaScript file. First, I need to get some hold of some elements here. The first one is the chat pop-up itself. I'm going to call it pop up equal document dot query selector and it's having a class of chat pop up. This way. Now I get a hold on the chat pop-up. Also, I need to get a hold on the chat button here because that's where I'm going to listen if the user click it, click it or not. So I'm going to do constant chat btn equal document a query selector 
a chat PTM. This is for the emoji. I'm gonna put a comment here, emoji selection. And now I need to do chat button, toggler. So I need to add an event listener to my chat button. And the event that I'm interested in, when the user click on it, I wanna run a function. And the function here, using an ES6 arrow function, it will select the pop-up element, our chat pop-up element, and it will go through the class list and it will toggle a class called show, which is gonna display it as flex. So once I save that and I go here, click on it, as you can see, it's gonna appear. If I click on it again, it's gonna disappear. And it's gonna be that way. The next thing I wanna do when I add text here or emojis or anything, and when I click on the submit button, I wanna add this text to my chat window here. To do so, I need to get a hold on the chat button. So I'm gonna get a hold on it here. I'm gonna create a constant. I'm gonna call it uh, submit PTN, which is document uh, query selector. I'm gonna select the submit. Also, I need to get a hold for the chat area here. I'm gonna call it constant chat area equal document dot query selector dot chat area. And finally, I wanna get a hold on my input element here. I'm gonna do constant input ELM short for element document dot query selector. I'm gonna do input. Now I have all the elements that I'm gonna to need to do the job. So I'm gonna go over here and now send message send a message first you need to listen to the submit button add an event listener and when the user click in this event listener you want to get the value so I'm gonna do a variable here using let user input which is gonna be the input element or input ELM in that case, dot value. And if you wanna test everything, you can do console.log the user input. And let's give it a test. I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna type hi, put some emojis, press send, now it's not showing anything. However, if we inspect the page and we go to the console, notice that we get it printed in the console. So I get a hold on whatever the user entered here using the input element dot value. Once I get the value, I'm gonna create a temp uh, template, like a temporary element or temporary variable. I'm gonna use a back text here gonna use a div, create a div with a class. Gonna give it a class, output, message. Gonna close this div. Inside my output message, is gonna be consist of two things, similar to the input message. My avatar, because I'm the one who's gonna be sending this message, and whatever I entered here in the input field. So it's gonna be span, First, I'm gonna put the text because it's gonna be in reverse way. So it's gonna be the text, then the image. So 
it's going to be the span that having the message with a class of my message. And I'm going to get whatever the user input to close the span and also put the image. Now I'm going to put the image source, the IMG folder, and I'm going to put me.jpg, which is supposed to be my avatar or the user avatar. And I'm going to give it a class of avatar. Let's save this. Nothing going to happen because this is just a temporary location to hold my uh, template. So I need uh, to get the chat area, which I already have a constant here for the chat area. And I need an insert and adjacent HTML. And that adjacent HTML, it will go before end, and the element itself will be the temp. My temp templates here gonna go over there let's give it a try click on it put some emojis I'm gonna say hi and click send and as you can see it's not styled yet we're gonna style this my input but it's already added to the chat area also I need to as you can see when I send it I still have my text here I need to clear that once I click the send button. To do that, all you need to do is get a hold on the input, which we call it input here, input ELM, dot value, and you set it to nothing. So now if I go up again here, type something, and I click send, as you see, it's cleared from here. And that's it for the JavaScript part. Now I have to go back and style uh, this message. And notice that I give it a class of out message and also my message. Let's work in that. Go to the styling sheet. And after the submit button here, I'm gonna give it my message display flex and I want to justify content flex end this is for my message it's doing this because we didn't set the out message as display flex justify content flex end and also we need to align the items, the center. Now they are next to each other, should look good. We need to do some margin, 0 0.75 rem. We need to give some padding for my message. So I'm gonna do padding of 0 0.5 rem. And now I need to give it a little bit of background because right now the background is white. So I'm gonna give it background color. In that case, I'm gonna give it DDD, which is a light gray. It is light gray. I'm gonna do border radius, 25 pixel. And I'm gonna do box shadow of zero, two pixels, five pixels, RGBA value 2.4. However, I have a problem now. Why if I send a long text? Like I keep sending text, text like this. And I hit enter or send. As you can see, it's gonna be cut off here. It's not gonna show the whole message. To fix this, we have a nice property which is called word break. I need to break this text and I'm going to put the value as break all. And once I do that, notice now that text has been breaking and it's showing the whole message. If I'm sending a long message, 
and my emojis is working now yeah and you can see now the scroll bar has shown up I can send more messages and here for the scroll bar it's look good so far and I can toggle get back to the messages now let's check how we're gonna look in small screens it will look different in small screens so I'm gonna spec it I'm gonna as you can see, it looked like really, let's test it on iPhone 6. Well, it's not perfect. We need to fix this. To do that, I need a media query. And I'm gonna select my breaking point to be maximum max width of 500 pixels. And in that case, when it reached to 500 pixel or smaller, I will select my chat pop-up. I'm gonna do the bottom, 120 pixel. I'm gonna do the right, 10%. Now, as you can see, it moved on top of the button. However, I wanna set the width to be 80% of the view width to make it more uh, that, uh, relative widths not just set as pixels so it can it can fit different screens so now if i change the screen it will always set as 50 percent of the view widths okay and it looked good in the small phones as you can see uh, you still can toggle it well that's it guys i hope you like the video and uh, you find this project helpful for you and uh, if you like the video please Hit the like button and if you're not subscribed to our channel please subscribe now to get our latest video and projects similar to this